Well, hello there. In this video, I'm going to discuss what it's like to be a YouTuber in the making space in 2018, share some advice to my fellow creators, and explain why I'm taking a break from uploading for a month. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. I started the Makers Muse YouTube channel almost five years ago actually, and I just looked through my stats and I've uploaded basically 500 or so videos in that space of time. That's like 100 videos a year and you can go back and I have built so many things. I've made multiple tutorials, I've reviewed countless machines and 3D printers, but lately I've had to take a step back and I'm looking to move forwards in a different direction. I want to just have a frank chat with you guys as to what my thoughts are and what my plans are and share some advice to some of my fellow creators who might see me as someone to kind of aspire to, not to put myself you know, on a pedestal or anything, but having a large channel with you know 300,000 subscribers is something that a lot of small creators aspire to. And I definitely did as well, but it's not all peachy uh, when you get to this point. And I want to sort of shed some light on that as well. I have a little uh, little list written down here in my gorgeous Roll Barn uh, notebook. But I want to start with the YouTube grind. 2018 has been a really interesting year for YouTube creators. And we're starting to hear this term burnout quite a lot. So when I got on the platform, I was quite lucky. In 2014, when my channel was just sort of starting off, uh, there wasn't really anyone else in the 3D printing space. I think Tom was in and he was doing quite well, but I was just kind of sharing my passion. I've shared this story many times. I was working in the industry as someone who was 3D printing on demand and I didn't like my job, but I did like the technology and I had a passion for it. So I started sharing that as through projects and tutorials on Maker's Muse, and that's how I got started. But uh, from then on, things have been really interesting. We've seen YouTube just massively expand. We've seen lots of new people come onto the platform and do really well. And we've seen it become an accepted form of basically making a living. I, this is my job. Uh, producing content and projects is my full-time job, which is interesting when you come to situations like I'm in now where you kind of feel you have to take a break because a lot of the influences in the the sort of YouTube guru space where they sort of give you advice on how to grow your channel like Tim Schmoyer who is fantastic and I highly recommend his channel but a lot of them push this idea that the algorithm favors upload frequency you have to upload all the freaking time to stay relevant. And it is kind of true, but what none of these people talk about is creators in the DIY space. That is people who actually make things. Projects, CAD design, 3D modeling, animation. These people, these gurus, talk about uploading every day, sometimes even twice a day. And that's great if your channel is literally like just following your day to day life through a vlog or some of them are just listing information from other sources and compiling them together into their own videos on their channel. But if you're making stuff like like this, right, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a bit, this doesn't take a day to make to, to design this so far has taken a week, maybe. <laughs> and I think something that not many people are talking about is creator burnout for makers. And this is why I'm making this video because I'm taking a break from uploading content because I am the whole thing. I am the whole shebang on Makers Muse. I create the projects, I write the scripts, I learn the software, I 3D print the stuff, I put it together, I film the videos, I edit them, I do everything. But what this has done is effectively throttled my ability to keep growing as a creator. I went into the space with heaps of knowledge on 3D printing and that sort of thing. But what I've sort of found is now I want to expand past that into electromechanical projects and CNC. And I'm working in the business and not on the business due to this fear of not taking a break. And to bring you guys new and interesting content 
I need to invest in myself to take a step back and actually spend that time without this guilt of not uploading. And it is a guilt. And this is something I want to share with my fellow creators. Have you been up in the middle of the night checking your real time view stats for, for the last 48 hours? Yes, I did that religiously. I'd wake up to go to the bathroom and then just fire up the phone and look almost almost subconsciously to keep an eye on that number. That number is extremely dangerous to keep a close look on. So let's take viral videos, for example. I made the Spherikon video as a interest and exploration to these shapes, these really cool things that roll. It's my most watched video on the channel at 4 million plus views. Pretty crazy, right? And I gained a lot of subscribers due to that. The number went crazy for that, that 48 hour real time view, view count. And that number is exhilarating as you see it shoot up. But then as it starts to come down, there's this, this emptiness feeling. It's horrible. You see this number start dropping off. And then I do believe that YouTube does kind of punish you if you don't keep like, it's like giving you the, uh, the carrot being like, Hey, look, a, a viral video. Now you should upload lots. And if you don't, I do feel YouTube kind of just goes, well, okay, we're going to bury you a bit after that, whatever it's, it's all conjecture, but that, that really is depressing. And it's something that I've had to really take a step back from and through, through, uh, support from my family and partner, I've been able to, and I've been able to kind of view YouTube as what it, what it used to be for me, which is a passion project. And this is what I want to talk about for my fellow creators who might be looking at me for inspiration. You should upload content that you're passionate about. Uh, in the past, I've felt I have to get a video out this week. And if you're making videos that you wouldn't watch yourself or when you're editing them, you don't feel proud of, why are you putting this out into the community? Um, and I am guilty of this, making videos that I thought would do well and they didn't. And then of course you make a video that you're passionate about and you don't even put that thought into it because you're like, you enjoy it, the process, and then it goes, <laughs> it does really well. Like uh, I documented the 3D prints at my parents' house in the sun just with my phone, you know, I just filmed it. And I didn't even have my face in it. I just did a voiceover and that video did remarkably well. So that would be my first bit of advice is, make it a passion project and keep it a passion project and ignore this stupid myth of upload frequency. Um, and it is a myth because I can tell you some of the creators I'm watching right now in this space, this making and designing space who upload very infrequently. Um, I've got a list here. RC life on, um, fantastic guy, Tom Stanton as well. Um, both of them do really cool 3D printed remote control projects and their upload frequencies are not uh, are not every single day or every week even. And it's definitely paying off for both of them. Um, Michael Reeves, Jesus Christ. Michael Reeves is not a PG channel. And if you uh, don't like kind of edgy content, don't check him out. But he's made 30 uploads and he's going to hit a million subs probably in the next few weeks. Uh, and his content is extremely unique, combines programming with 3D printing with just random ridiculous things that if that's not proof that you don't need upload frequency to do well on YouTube, I don't know what it is. And of course, one of my old favorites would be DIY perks, absolutely relaxing DIY content uploads, maybe once a month or something. If that also does extremely well. Second thing is monetization. You might think as a channel at 300 ish thousand subs that I'm absolutely rolling in AdSense cash. Um, and that's not true. I actually get more money through my amazing Patreon supporters every month than I do through uh, AdSense, except when that Spher Sphericon video went viral, that boosted a bit above. But again, that's like never happened before. So you need external sources of income. You need various sources of, uh, of income to make a channel sustainable in 2018. Don't at all think AdSense is going to be the be all and end all. If anything, it's a little bit of cream on top. And not to mention the fact that your videos might get demonetized <laughs> as well. Like in the case of Michael Reeves, unfortunately, all of his content is demonetized, but you can get sponsors and that sort of thing. Uh, I sell files and I, I work on educational content, but yeah, my amazing Patreon supporters do keep the channel going because that's a consistent income. There's a bit of churn there, but AdSense is absolutely terrible on the platform. And I'm not going to sort of, sort of complain about that and say, Oh, YouTube should pay me more. Look, I'm uploading videos for free to a worldwide audience. I'd almost pay for that. 
But if you want to make a living, you need an external source or multiple sources. I have various sources of income through affiliates to my own product sales, as I mentioned. And again, if you're interested in actually making a sustainable channel, go check out Tim Schmoyer. So where am I going with all this? Well, I've decided to invest in myself for the next month and take a break. I will be active on Patreon as a reward to my amazing supporters there and also probably Instagram, to be honest. I'm moving a bit away from Twitter. I like to post updates of my projects and just to show you what I've been doing by taking a step back. Um, this is a 3D printer build I'm working on. This is the version three. You can see I've been tinkering a lot there with it and it's gonna do a really cool thing. I'm really, really excited about this one. And uh, this, which is a uh, there's something loose in there. <laughs> it's it's a uh, turntable. I've always sort of shown prints by turning them slowly, but I was like, I want to make my own turntable. Why not just you know design one? I've done some really interesting things, like an internal gear which rides on a step motor. So it's all internalized. It's really nicely uh, laid out with these uh, these rollers from a 3D printer, external speed dial. Programming is a real big weak, point, weak spot for me, so I'm really investing the time to learn a bit of programming to make these projects better. And stuff like that just can't be done on a weekly basis, even if you're doing it full time, because as I said, there's so much that goes behind the scenes of running a channel like the accounting and the filming and editing. So I look forward to seeing you guys in a month's time. Tick that bell if you want to get a notification for it. I know that's very corny, but honestly, it's probably the only way you're guaranteed to see that upload. And please go check out those other channels I mentioned, like RC Life on, Tom Stanton, Michael Reeves, DIY Perks, and all my other fellow 3D printing creators on this platform. And again, I really do appreciate the support, guys, over on Patreon. It does really, really help. And I'll be posting, as I said, on Instagram as well. So I usually say I look forward to seeing you again very shortly, but in this case, I look forward to seeing you in a month's time here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye.